We are going to begin the funeral service for Mrs. Eileen Falk. If you have a cell phone, I'd ask you kindly to place it in the silent mode at this time or turn it completely off. I'd also like to welcome uh, friends via live stream. On behalf of the family, thank you for attending. Services will be conducted by Rabbi Sidney Helbron of Temple Bethel in Northbrook. It's going to start with the ancient tradition of cutting of the Kriya. Thank you. Um, and Peggy, you're going to assist with that. Can you hear me in the back? Yes. Okay. Um, just want to make sure that's good. Um, I'm going to invite everyone who is wearing a ribbon to please rise. It's our custom, um, upon hearing of the death of a loved one, the tradition was that those who were, who were immediate family, um, parents, siblings, spouses, and children, would tear their clothing as a sign of, of mourning. Um, and the ribbon today is taking the place of the garments underneath it. Um, there's a brief blessing that I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Um, before we do, I just want to give you one bit of, of knowledge. Um, if the ribbon, it's, it's traditional to wear the ribbon for, for a week, the week of mourning. If you're wearing the ribbon and it falls off or disappears and you don't know where it is, it's not a sign. It, it doesn't mean that you've done something wrong and, and someone's angry. You're, Eileen would never <laughs> be that way anyway. But, but when, at these times, we often become superstitious. So um, I just wanted to reassure you on that. So you can repeat after me first in Hebrew and then in English. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Dayan HaEmet. We praise you, O Lord our God, judge of truth. And after your ribbon is torn, you can be seated. Adonai ma adam vateda ehu ben enosh vadhashvehu adam lehevel dama yamav kitsel over baboker yatsits vechalaf la erev yumalel viavesh tashiv enosh ad daka vetomar shuvu vene adam lu chochmu yaskilizot Yavinu la acharitam, ki lo v'moto yikach hakol, lo ye rarach harav kvodo. Shmor tam or eyashar, ki acharit leish shalom. Pode Adonai nefesh avadav, velo yeshmu kol hachosimbo. Adonai, what are we that you have regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? We are like a breath. Our days are like a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning shoots up renewed, and in the evening fades and withers. You cause us to turn to dust, saying, Return, O mortal creatures. Would that we were wise, that we understood whither we are going. For when we die, we carry nothing away. Our glory does not accompany us. Mark the wholehearted and behold the upright. They shall have peace. Adonai, you redeem the souls of your servants, and none who trust in you shall be desolate. 
Death has taken our beloved Eileen Falk. Our friends grieve in their darkened world. In their silence, there is lamentation. In their tears, there is loneliness. Lost in their sorrow, may they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God. Be with them. For Eileen's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, for her companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of her heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator, in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Adonai Ro'i Lo Echsar Bino Deshe Yar Bitseni Alme Minuchot Yenahaleni Nafshi Shovev Yancheni Vamagale Tzedek Lemaan Shemo Gam Ki E Lech Bege Tsal Mavet Lo I Ra Ra Ki Ata Imadi Shivtecha Umishantecha Hema yinachamuni. Ta'aruch lefanai shulchan neged sorarai. Dishanta vashemen roshi. Kosi rivaya. Ach tov vechesed yirdefuni kol yame chayai. Vishavti bevet adonai leorech yamim. Those were the words of the 23rd Psalm which is written inside of the handout you received, and I'll invite you to read it along with me now. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Esa enai el heharim, me ayin yavo ezri, ezri me im adonai, ose shamaim va'aretz. I lift my eyes to the mountains. What is the source of my help? My help comes from Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. See, the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. God will guard your soul. Your going and coming, now and forever. A woman of valor, who can find? She is more precious than fine pearls. Her husband trusts in her, and so he lacks nothing. She does him good, never harm, all the days of her life. She perceives that her labor is rewarding. Her candle burns on into the night. 
She reaches out to those in need and extends her hands to the poor. She is clothed in strength and dignity, and she faces the future cheerfully. She speaks with wisdom. The law of kindness is on her lips. Her children rise up and bless her. Her husband sings her praises. Many daughters have done valiantly, but you excel them all. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan the Adonai Lakach, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach. Job cried, God has given and God has taken away, but blessed be the name of God. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us, yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures beyond the grave and that there is strength in faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God, you have given. You gave us a loved one who will not be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in her life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God, you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love, as we now say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach, Blessed be the name of God, now and forever. We'll take a moment now for our own private remembrances. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Among its many teachings on the meaning of life and death, the book of Ecclesiastes contains some very puzzling statements, including this one that the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. In trying to make sense of these words, our rabbis turned to a parable. They described a scene at a port where a beautiful, gleaming vessel was preparing to embark on a great voyage, while a second ship, this one battered and worn, was finally arriving home after decades on the sea. A crowd had assembled to witness this event and was praising the ship that came in, but were largely ignoring the sparkling vessel that was about to depart. A passerby witnessed this scene and was quite surprised by what he saw because it was the opposite of what he was accustomed to seeing. So he approached those who had assembled 
and asked them to explain their actions. They said, we are praising the ship that is arriving because it set out in peace and has returned in peace. As for this other vessel, we do not know yet what its fate will be. Similarly, when a child is born, we do not know how she will live her life. But when the time comes for her to depart this earth, the nature of her, her deeds are clear for all to see. And friends, there can be no doubt about the beauty of the voyage that was the life of Eileen Falk. She was a good, loving, caring, and giving wife, mother, grandmother, aunt, cousin, and friend. A woman who, as Holly defined her mommy, created a solar system of love. Eileen was the center, and she sent forth light like the sun. Like the sun is surrounded by planets and moons and constellations, Eileen's gravitational field grabbed hold of relatives and friends, held in place by her energy of a love that expanded in time to encompass generation after generation and will continue to flow in your hearts throughout your lives. Eileen was born here in Chicago 78 years ago, the oldest child of her family. Her parents divorced when she and Randy and Mark were children, leading Eileen to take on a parental role at a young age. And when their mother, Shirley, passed away at the age of 52, Eileen formally became a second mother, the matriarch of her family, which included not only her siblings and their families, but also their in-laws, as well as dear friends, who were all encompassed in Eileen's universe and became a part of her family. Indeed, as I myself experienced, she was a woman whose love burst forth from within, eager to encompass everyone whose path she crossed. Eileen was 22 years old when she first met her beloved husband, Ken. They'd been set up on a blind date, and while I don't know what they did that night, I can tell you that she came home and told her mother, I'm going to marry that man. And wouldn't you know it, Ken felt the same thing. So when they went out again the next week, although his heart was shouting at him to propose, his head said, are you crazy? You've only known her a week. But after they went out the next week, Ken could no longer contain himself. Although he failed to pull the trigger in person, when he returned home, he realized his error. He picked up the phone and urgently asked to speak to Eileen so he could propose. Her response, looks like you guys know it, right? What took you so long? <laughs> I was ready to marry you last week. Undoubtedly, theirs was a match made in heaven. As you might imagine, Eileen and Ken's marriage was a reflection of the era they lived in. They were products of their age. And so Ken went off to work each day and felt comfortable and secure in leaving Eileen to watch over their home and raise their family. And truth be told, Ken was as supportive of the role that Eileen played in their family as a man could be. He stood by Eileen's side and supported her decisions, especially with regards to her expectations for their children, Holly, Michael, and Josh. To illustrate the extent of Ken's love, devotion, and dependence on her, Eileen, a woman who was a voracious reader and had a love of science fiction, once mentioned that she'd like to be an astronaut and explore the universe. Obviously, a fanciful comment, not a plan of action. But for Ken, rather than acknowledge her interest in the unknown, the thought of a world without Eileen was so frightening that it left him shaken and led to an argument 
as he explained that he didn't know what he would do without her. And actually, this was true not only for him, but for almost everyone else in Eileen's life as well. Her strength, presence, love, thoughtfulness, positivity, acceptance played such a powerful role in the lives of everyone around her. It was almost impossible for them to conceive of what life would be without her. In addition to the love, respect, and guidance Eileen shared with everyone in her orbit, Eileen was also a master at Maj. She had an artistic streak she expressed through calligraphy and seamstress skills. She was a marvelous cook whose home was the gathering place for the holidays and was open to all, and she was a proud Jew. Now, I could go on regaling you with stories, but Eileen's story is best told by those who accompanied her on her voyage. And so, in a moment, I will call on Holly and Randy and Edie to share some of their recollections of this Eshet Chayel, this woman of valor. But before I do, I'll allow the words of the psalmist to sum this up. A good name is better than precious oil. A good name is better than anything else we might strive to acquire in this lifetime. For when the time comes for us to depart this earth, we carry nothing else away. Our glory does not accompany us. Eileen Falk was a caring daughter, a loving sister, a devoted spouse, a caring mother, a giving aunt, cousin, and friend, and a proud grandmother. She was a woman who knew that the greatest support she could provide to others was to let them know that she accepted them for who they authentically are and offered unconditional love. She had standards, expecting you to strive to live up to your highest selves, and she was always present to help you achieve those dreams. Aline lived a life of generosity, kindness, goodness, and love, giving much more than she ever took, setting an example for each of us to follow, and creating a name that will ever be remembered by all who knew her. Zecher Tzadik Livracha The memory of Eileen Falk will ever be a blessing. And let us say, Amen. I'd like to invite Randy to come first to share, and then Edie and uh, Holly will come up third. What is the definition of a sister? Sister, noun, a woman or girl in relation to other daughters and sons of her parents. What is the meaning of Eileen? From the Irish, meaning beautiful bird. The etymology of the name is intertwined with Irish folklore and imagery as it draws inspiration from the grace and allure of birds. In literature, she symbolizes beauty and freedom. And now, the meaning of my sister, Eileen. I was only 10 when she got married. Oh, how I cried at that wedding. I was losing my big sister. I was devastated. But I didn't lose her. We just grew into different roles. She became a mommy and I an aunt. My sis was the best mom there ever was. Just look at her beautiful children for verification. Eileen was the glue to our family. She brought us together for holidays. What a cook. I did not get that gene. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like my mom. She couldn't even toast bread. My goodness, it was the best brisket ever. Everything my sis did, she did with love. She took care of everyone and everything. She 
she loved being a wife and a mother. And as for me, I believe she loved being my big sis. She was always there for me. When I got sick last year, all I wanted was my mommy in a teddy bear. In true big sister form, Eileen sent me a teddy. She said she couldn't bring me my mommy. My sister never judged. She supported those she loved no matter what. In all my 65 years, I only remember being angry with her one time. And even then, she understood my feelings, and she always stayed calm and quiet. I honestly don't remember ever hearing her raise her voice. Right until my last conversation with her, she was worried about my tears, not her dying. She told me she was tired. She didn't want to fight anymore. When I told her I was coming, she was more worried about my traveling after surgery. I cried, and she said no more tears. Right to the end, my big sister was more concerned with me than herself. My sister was my best friend. When things got too difficult for me, she was the one I reached out to. I told her everything, and I mean everything. Oh, how we laughed over some of my very stupid choices. I asked my sis not to do anything until I could see her. I said we'd have our last dance. And she was so funny, she said, did we ever have a first dance? And I said, no, so we'll have our first and our last. I sat with her Tuesday. I talked to her and told her how much I love her and what a good mom she was. I will miss my dear sister more than I can ever express. She loved me unconditionally. She was always in my corner, forever in my heart. Fly, beautiful bird. Eileen was my sister-in-law, uh, and I don't believe that anyone could have wished for a better sister-in-law. Sister, really. She was the sister I didn't have. So Randy, Josh, and Randy, Gary, and thank you for sharing your sister with me. She was kind, caring, and generous. She was always direct. And as Randy, <clears throat> Randy said, never judgmental in whatever she had to say to us. And she was always there for us when we needed her. She's been described as the center of the solar system, as the glue to, that held us together. I called her the mother hen for our entire extended family, hosting holiday dinners for dozens of us, plentiful meals with all of the holiday specials that we look forward to every year. She was also the host for so many special family events, birthdays, graduations, or whatever happy occasion that could come, become the reason for bringing the family together. And family was clearly the most important focus for her life. She was so proud of her three children, and especially of her grandchildren. A good day for her was to spend time with one or more of her grandchildren, playing board games, card games, or more recently, games on her phone, which she claimed she could never follow, or simply talking with them about their day. She was also a loving aunt to her daughter and to her other nieces and nephews as well. When our daughter Rebecca was born, she gave us a beautiful quilted blanket that is still a part of our family heirlooms today. And as Rebecca got older, and especially during her often challenging teenage years, Eileen was the source of great wisdom and level-headed advice whenever I called and said, now, what do I do? 
in all fairness and in gratitude to Eileen, I should say that our daughter who is here with us today is now a beautiful young woman with a loving, loving and loving, lovely family of her own. Eileen was also the source of family lore. Whenever we couldn't recall the story of a particular relative from the past or the date of an important family event, we could count on Eileen to fill in the blanks. In fact, Friday before last, when we were visiting with Eileen, she told us a story that I had never heard before. She was recalling a conversation that she had with my husband Gerald, her brother-in-law, shortly after she and Ken had become engaged. She said that Gerald corrected something she had said in the most kind and caring way. And for a moment she thought, am I marrying the right brother? <laughs> but then she quickly added, nah, I'm making the right decision. And then I added, you were obviously saving Gerald for me, at which point we had a good laugh. Eileen was a fighter in the best sense of the word. When Ken became ill, she did everything possible to make sure he got the attention and care he needed. And when he needed the support of a nursing home, she was there every day to make sure he was well taken care of and to give him the love and support that he needed and deserved. And when she herself became ill, she accepted everything that she needed to with grace and an, exception, an acceptance that only a courageous person could muster until she couldn't anymore. We have lost a beautiful, caring, and loving person. We will cherish all the wonderful memories we have, and we are all that much richer for having had Eileen as a part of our lives. Hi, everybody. Boy, Mommy would have enjoyed this gathering of everybody. Um, I named my eulogy uh, two suits, a wedding gown, and a bag full of dresses, a mother-daughter relationship through time. I was 12 years old, junior high, and for whatever reason, I developed a significant disdain for my mom. I was absolutely determined to not grow up to be like her. I wasn't going to spend my time as a housewife and a mom. And in my first act of defiance, I chose not to take typing and home economics. Instead, wait for it, I took band and Spanish, my ticket to be the best version of a working woman I could be. Not long thereafter, I was out shopping with mommy, and we were in Lord and Taylor buying a shower gift. Now, Mom and Dad didn't always have a lot of money. Mommy did calligraphy and sold invitations. And in our household growing up, Daddy's money was the family money, and Mommy's money was Mommy's money. But Mommy always used her money for other people. And as we were riding down the escalator in Lord and Taylor, oh, my gaze fell upon the most gorgeous lilac suit. Oh, a long pencil skirt, a matching jacket, and oh, a ruffled blouse, ruffled down the front and in the neck. Oh, God, it was gorgeous. And Mommy said, do you want to try it on? And I said, absolutely. That suit must have cost a fortune. And Mommy used her calligraphy money. Even though I was a disdainful preteen, things continued actually to get difficult between us especially when I turned 16. Some of you may have heard I started dating an older boy. And wait for it, he wasn't Jewish. <laughs> a few years later, we didn't talk very much, but I was up in college and uh, had come back home to live. And I needed to go to an internship fair to find a job, and I needed a suit. And mommy took me out shopping. We went to Carson, Perry, Scott, and Randhurst. And we found the most gorgeous tweed brown and beige suit, and it was stunning. And I felt so grown up and a professional instead of just like a student. And then we went home, 
and she taught me how to shake hands. She reviewed my resume, and I got the magnificent job that I had at Abbott Laboratories as a result. When I was 21 years old, I got engaged. Same older boy, still not Jewish. <laughs> Mommy took me wedding dress shopping, Gigi's closet in Wilmette. Something that day changed significantly in our relationship. And without needing to say it to each other, we forgave one another. We had the most magnificent year before Mitch and I were married of dress shopping, of flower shopping, of putting things on a registry. I have never been so close to my mom as I was in those years. After that, we did things like go maternity dress shopping, baby clothes shopping. Just before the pandemic, mama's well-being started to deteriorate, slowly at first and then much more rapidly. And the tables turned on our relationship again, and it got very hard. But this time, I wasn't able to ignore her. In fact, the two of us needed to spend an awful lot of time together. And it resulted in me needing to take an extended family leave from work. We started doing a lot better again when she got out of the hospital last October. And I will forever be grateful for the privilege of being able to take care of my mommy these last two and a half years. The last time she and I laughed together was during her last hospital stay just last month. I texted her to say that I was going to be late that I, stop, I was stopping in the hospital gift shop. I got to her room and I held up two shopping bags full of really cute spring and summer dresses that I had found and nothing for her. She laughed, she laughed so hard. A joyous, beautiful, I love you so much daughter laugh. I stand here today, the woman my mom raised me to be strong and independent like she was, a little bit stubborn, a feminist, adept at forms and dealing with insurance agencies, deeply in, in love with my husband, Mitch, who, still not Jewish, by the way, <laughs> and proud of the family home that we've made together, passionate about being Rachel's mama, and very happiest when I'm with family and friends. While I read more than ever, I can't cook or sew, I still don't know how to play Maj, and I don't have any of mom's artistic talents. But I'm going to be okay nonetheless. We're all going to be okay. Thank you so much for such beautiful, beautiful memories and stories um, that come from the heart. And I know that everyone here carries similar stories as well. Um, Eileen was truly a remarkable woman. Into your care, we entrust the spirit of Eileen Falk. For you keep faith with your children in death as in life. Sustain us that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead, knowing that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you, God, are with us. You are the light of our life, our hope in eternity. I'll ask us to rise now for our memorial prayer. El Malay Rachamim, Shochin Bam Romim, Hamtse Minucha Nechona Tachat Kanfeha Shrina, Im Kedoshim Uthorim, Kezohar Harakia Mazirim, Et Nishmat Yocheved Devora, Shahalcha La Ulama, Bal Harachamim Yasti Reha Beseta Kanafav La Ulamim, Vitzror bitzror hachayim et nishmata. Adonai hu nachalata. 
ותנוח בשלום על משכבה, ונאמר אמן. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Eileen Falk, Yocheved Devora, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find rest in your eternal presence, and let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. Amen. You can be seated for a moment. This does conclude the service here at the chapel. The family will be returning back here at the chapel following the burial to sit Shiva until 9 p.m. Interment will take place at Shalom Memorial Park Cemetery at 1700 West Rand Road in Arlington Heights. The procession will be forming in the parking lot. Please keep in mind a few safety features while in the procession. Keep your bright headlights on at all times. Put your emergency blinkers on. Attach the orange funeral sticker to the passenger portion of your front windshield. And we'll also attach a flag to the roof of your car. And please stay as close as safety permits to the car in front of you. The following people have been selected to serve as Paul Bears. When I call your name, if you please come forward. Jeff, Jim, Mitch, Piotr, Blaith, Hal, Don, and Ted, and I know you were asked, so if you could come, please step forward. And we'll have everyone please rise as the family and the rabbi and Mrs. Falk are escorted from the chapel. Thank you. He's got a little bit of time, maybe like people.